I'm Dawn Blackman in for Conrad Retzel. And today, in sitting down with Conrad Retzel, we have Conrad Retzel. <laughs> Welcome, Conrad. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. <laughs> I understand that there's a big move coming up for you and Martine. Yes. Uh, the 1st of July, we're going to be moving to Eureka, Illinois, to a Mennonite retirement center called Maple Lawn Homes. Uh, we uh, have reached the age <laughs> where it's timely for us to do that. And we'll have be renting a cottage. They're very fine cottages. And it has an attached garage. Huh? So I'll have a lot of room for bookcases. Okay, I was going to ask, what are you going to do with all <laughs> those hymn books you have? Uh, yes, I have a big hymn book collection as well as a lot of nature books and that sort of thing. And I'm very happy to be able to take them with us. Well, good. What's that mean for this program? Well, there are ways in which Technology would enable me to continue uh, doing interviews, uh, and, but uh, then, in the meantime, I'm going to be handing it over to you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> You're more than welcome, because Dawn has, knows a lot of people here in this community. She's been active in various causes, and she can tell you about some of those. And. I think you'll be quite interested in what Don uh, has to share. And as she takes over the program, I'm sure many people will um, enjoy watching and listening. Well, I'm just going to follow in your footsteps. <laughs> okay. We'll be looking at some of the same issues and things that Conrad has looked at over the years. Um, while Conrad's been active in social justice issues through the Mennonite Church, I've been active through the Church of the Brethren. And, uh, I'm just going to follow in your footsteps. <laughs> okay, good. Where is the Church of the Brethren? The Church of the Brethren is in Champaign. It's on Neal Street, just north of Bradley Avenue. We are in the 62nd year in that location. Okay. So. And as people drive along Neal Street, what will they see at the front of your church building? Well, they'll see a yellow brick church, and underneath the stained glass window, there's a banner that says, Peace and Social Justice practiced here. Mm -hmm. Love mercy, do justice, walk humbly before God. So. That's a very well-known uh, passage from the book of Micah. Micah, yes. And it's one that no matter what a person's belief is, whether they even have a belief, those are good things to follow. That's the golden rule. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, we're going to be moving to Maple Lawn Homes as I said, July, and we're looking forward to it. It's a very, very interesting community. There's a, a college nearby, Eureka mm -hmm. College. Maple Lawn Homes is a very beautiful facility. We're going to be living in one of their cottages, and uh, they have a fine library in town. So we'll be very, and it's, it's between Bloomington and Peoria, so if we want to go to town, we can do that easily, too. About an hour and a half drive? Yes, about an hour and a half from here. You'll have to come up sometime. I'll know where to find you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the things that I'm looking forward to exploring um, in this place is um, work with young people. We do a lot of work with young people through our Children's Peace Ministry at the Church mm -hmm. of the Brethren mm -hmm. called Culture Club. And as the children are aging and going into the workplace, I'm looking forward to doing some interviews with people who could equip them with tools for having a successful transition to young adulthood and the job market. What would be an example of that? Well, one of the things that I'd really like to do is to interview someone who could give them tools as far as understanding how to remain safe in the workplace, things that they might need to have their awareness incre increased about and let them know what the rules are. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you supposed to know about things that you're handling at work? So, something else I'd like to have them do is, is, is have bring someone in who understands about labor law. Everybody knows the minimum wage, but for most of us, that's where our information ends. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to bring someone on, I'm going to bring mm -hmm. someone on, who will speak to labor law particularly aimed at new entrants into the job market, our young people who are just getting started. You know, those are very good ideas because not every place of employment does a good job of orienting their people to their jobs. 
sometimes it's uh, crunch time when you get a new employee. Mm -hmm. And they learn to do the job, but they're the little auxiliary things that could be helpful don't always get transferred right away. One of our features is going to be where have all the groceries gone? Mm. Because we are experiencing a dearth of places to shop for healthy food in Champaign-Urbana. All of our grocery stores seem to be congregated in one or two areas, mm -hmm. which leave some areas without any accessible um, healthy vegetables and fruits. So we're going to look at what's happened, what used to be, what's happening now, and how some of our options for purchasing healthy groceries have uh, changed. Now, <clears throat> what, uh, what has equipped you, what experiences have equipped you to address those questions? Well, one of the things is my participation as steward for the Randolph Street Community Garden. Mm -hmm. um, it's located between Randolph Street and Neal at Beardsley Avenue in Champaign mm -hmm. uh, on property owned by Unit 4 Schools. We're right between Stratton Elementary School and the Columbia Center. Uh, that area has no grocery stores that are accessible. It's only mm -hmm. been within the last month that you could even buy bananas, apples, and oranges at the gas stations. So we've been having uh, an organic garden there on that property. I've been steward for seven or eight years now, and the, the garden existed prior to that under the leadership of the extension, Master, Gar Master mm. Gardeners. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, it was a student project. Urban planning, an, an urban planning student started the garden as her project, and when she graduated, they tend to do that, <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. the, the uh, mm -hmm. Master Gardeners took over, and when the Master Gardeners withdrew, then I stepped in, and Church of the Brethren became the fiscal agent and the sponsor of the garden. Very good. You know, that's uh, an excellent project for a church to be involved in because it touches people's lives in a variety of ways, doesn't it? It does. I mean, in addition to growing groceries, things for people's tables, the garden's become a, sp a spot for community building, mm -hmm. and we're very pleased about that. The gardeners who garden there, plus people who help us, our supporters, uh, urban planning students and different students from the university and other community members. Uh, New Covenant Church has become a real big supporter mm -hmm. of us. Right. And uh, we're excited to be the place where people meet in Champaign who might not meet otherwise yes. and give people an opportunity to interact in a in a non-threatening environment in a fun kind of way too. I attended an event that you had where people could come in, they could see the gardens, and then uh, we had a potluck, a number of people came. Tell us about that event. Who are some of the people who came? Oh, well, that's our annual garden party. Oh, yes. It's our last, usually our last event in the garden before we close it. and. Uh, it's a 1920s themed garden party. We wear big hats and long dresses and white, even though it's after Labor Day. And uh, we play croquet and badminton and eat lots of food that yes, everybody yes. brings. It's a potluck. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, we were really pleased that the mayor of Champagne came. I think he was not planning to stay so long, but he was having a good time. Yes, so he hung that. out with us for a while. <laughs> yes. And all the children have their garden uh, beds all fixed up, and we have signs telling who's in what bed and what's happening in, with the group that's in there. And all of the gardeners come, the students who assist us come, they, the neighborhood comes. You and Martine were yes, there. Yes, that's right. And I remember how happy the children were to show off their produce. Oh, gosh. They really... They, especially the young guys. They were so proud of yes. their beds. They work hard. Everybody works hard on those yeah, beds. Right. This year we've increased our, um, our garden, too. The uh, school district was kind enough to authorize more use of the land. Oh. So we have some new beds, and we took some of the larger beds, which were a little bit unwieldy, and broke them up into smaller mm -hmm. beds. Mm -hmm. And we had a big uh, work day just last weekend. Um, it was really exciting. We had 
uh, friends and neighbors and who owned tools and knew how to use them. So we were able to get the beds divided. We were able to get uh, compost moved into the beds. It was really a great day. We also got our, uh, our fundraiser started because in the fall, uh, we were given a grant to um, help the garden. And what we did was buy some bulbs. We planted those bulbs. And 1,000 bulbs we planted. And we were able to harvest some of those which were ready to bloom. So now as our fundraiser, we are selling potted daffodils oh. and grape hyacinths and tulips to uh, support the garden. We need new tools. How can people buy those? They can either uh, come by the Church of the Brethren at 1210 North Neal, or they can call me at 217-398-2787. Repeat that. 217-398-2787. Yes. And as soon as the weather gets a little bit warmer, we're going to set up shop somewhere, either at the church or at the uh, Fresh Catch Fish Market there on Randolph at Maple Street, and we're going to sell our our potted plants. You know, that's a wonderful project because when children can get in touch with the earth and growing things, not only are they learning things, but I think it does something to children psychologically and emotionally oh. to be able to get their hands in the soil. It, you know, we have a really great group of kids, but even they surprise me sometimes. <laughs> I opened the paper after our big snowstorm. Yeah. And on the second page, right up front, there were four of our gardeners, and they were out with shovels, shoveling snow. <laughs> so they have really been bitten by the entrepreneurial bug yes. after having grown vegetables and been able to take their surplus to the, to the garden market at the fish market and sell it on Saturdays. They were out all over that snow, re ready to earn some extra money. So. I grew up with farming, and so I learned early that the work must be done, but things come from, a re you, 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 get, you sell your crops. You get your hands in the soil. Well, here children in, the, in cities often don't have that experience. Oh. So you're giving it to them. Conrad, one of the reasons that we started to garden was that one of the children told me peas came from the basement of IGA. Yeah. Oh, there. Right. Oh, down in the basement of IGA, they have just all kinds of cases of peas, and whenever they need them, they go down there and get them. Ah, uh, yes. They had no idea that the peas were somewhere before they got to IGA. Yeah. And IGA didn't even have a basement, because we went to see. <laughs> so. That reminds me, when I was young, I went to the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago and saw a cow there. And I was told that the city children have no idea where milk comes from. So this is, gives them an idea where milk comes from. Well, if you don't have a reference point, you don't know. That's right. You, know, if you, never, you don't see very many cows in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago, and I knew that vegetables grew, but I didn't have a, any idea how oh, they yes. grew. Yeah. You know, tomatoes, potatoes. I knew tomatoes grew on a vine. I thought that's where potatoes grew, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, unless children are exposed to different things that's and given right. the opportunity to participate <laughs> in growing, they don't know. Well, it gives, it gives them a sense of the beauty of the earth, too, because, oh, and, and the passing of the seasons. And, you know, gardening is a, a universal discipline. That's true. It rains on everybody at the same time, mm -hmm. or it doesn't rain on everybody. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get your crops in the ground by a certain time, you don't have anything that comes before the cold weather sets in. So I'm finding that the children are learning to be more aware of the the seasons, and be more aware of how we have to be in tune with the earth. <laughs> and this, and I understand that this, the children learn about service to their fellow human they beings. They also learn this. about service. All of the children do time in the donation bed. We have a bed that is used to fill baskets for those people who come to our church pantry for assistance with food, and so the children. Uh, spend time working in that bed. And we also, when we harvest from that bed, our surplus, we use to make soup for the Time Center, the homeless shelter for men. Right. So every Thursday in the summer, they make soup in, from fresh vegetables. And in the winter, we use canned things and produce that we are able to um, get from Eastern Illinois Food Bank. Oh, yes. And we make um, 
soup for the time center then too. So they're learning that there are things that they can impact, that they can help people too. You know, if a child can grow up with an experience with the earth, with working together with others, in order to serve the needs of other people, they have learned some of life's most important lessons. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I think so too. One of the things that we do with Culture Club is to provide children the opportunity to learn about one another. Yes. Yeah. We have such diversity in our community, and our children go to school together, but they frequently have no contact after school. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've always been pleased about with Culture Club is that we, we draw children from all across the community. As a matter of fact, on, in the garden, every morning, Monday through Thursday from 8 to 10 this summer, we'll have a free gardening program for any child in the community who wants to stop in, garden in the bed for this for donation, yes. even have a little plot of their own so oh, that yeah. they can grow things for their families. And um, we're going to be serving breakfast. I just learned yesterday that Unit 4 School District is going to extend their breakfast program mm, to us. And the ladies right? will be coming about 9 o'clock with <laughs> a cold breakfast for the children. And then at 11 o'clock uh, at the church, they're going to bring a hot lunch. So any child up to age 18, 18 and under, who's in that area, who can just drop in and have lunch with us and do a craft and participate in the program. Now, what did that sign in front of your church building say? It says, Peace and Social Justice practiced here. Love mercy, do justice, walk humbly before God. And so the, you have been describing some very practical down-to-earth ways in which that's true. You know, in our walk, we try at Church of the Brethren to continue the work of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And basically, you look in the Bible and you see what Jesus did, and then you figure out a way to do that today. And there are many opportunities in Champaign to do that. That's true. There are many needy people in Champaign-Urbana. There are, and but there are also people who uh, can teach us and we can learn from one another about different cultures, about one another's cultures. So. Mm -hmm. so, Conrad, you're not going to just run off down there and never come back and visit, are you? Oh, listen. We have too many connections, too many friends in this community. We will get back down here now and then. Yes, we will. Okay. Well, we're going to, again this year at the Garden, be the ending point for the Freedom Ride, the Juneteenth Ride that celebrates um, the end of in the beginning of emancipation, when, t oh. when those people who were enslaved in Texas got the news, sometime in the middle of June of that year. So it's called Juneteenth. Uh, the bike group has a bike ride. Mm -hmm. You won't be riding in the bike ride with us, no, will you? No. But you could come for the party afterwards. I could come for the party. And we'll also be having our garden party. So. Okay. Now again, the date? Well, we have to wait. Every year we, we set it according to how our crops came in. I see. Okay. So the, the um, garden party is after Labor Day and sometime before October. So Now how can people know when that date is? Well, it'll be in the News Gazette calendar. We All always right. use the News Gazette calendar to let people know mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we'll also have the signs out in the garden. And we'll be texting people and letting them know. So if you'd like to be on our text list, you could send, you could call your telephone number into that number, 217-398-2787, leave it on my voicemail, and say that you want to be added to the Garden's text message list. And when we have events going on, we'll text you. So. You know, as you plan your schedule here now that you're going to be doing this program, <laughs> Uh, as that time draws near, you could have somebody in who's going to be involved in that. I sure will. We'll have one of the bike or ride organizers come in and talk about the ride. Yes. And I, I think I'm even going to ride this year. Oh, are you? I have a bicycle now. Well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Good for you, Don. So I have a bicycle and a helmet. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we'll also be looking at... Um, 
the way that things happen in our communities and keeping people informed about study sessions. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be a study session on will we have chickens and champagne, mm -hmm. we'll let people know about that. And You know, chickens and gardens belong together. I think so, too. Let, what better way to, have, to get the insects off the plant than to have chickens there? That, we always had that in our house. Well, I, always ha I have this little dream of giving each of the children a little chick for Easter, yeah. and then we can keep them in the garden. Yes. And they can see that eggs come from chickens, There's a <laughs> and whole not <laughs> IGA. <laughs> That's right. There's a whole sequence to life sure there unfolding. Is. And we might even push the envelope a little bit and see if we could have, like, a sheep out there to eat the grass. Hey, hey listen. <laughs> Why not? You know, I, I don't know what the, the city ordinances are, but they need, if they don't include opportunities like that, they need to be broadened to do that. Well, right now in Champaign, we can't have barnyard animals. Yeah. But I'd like to see that changed. Uh, yes. And there are a number of other people who are interested in seeing it changed, too. You know, have you ever gone to a meeting of the Champaign City Council? I have, and I watch it on television quite okay, you frequently. Should, you should get on there sometime. Also, the University of Illinois uh, uh, AM radio has, uh, you can get on and talk about something called uh, the public square. And that, you know, I think there are a number of venues, you know, uh, the, even the Illini unions, uh, I mean the uh, University of Illinois paper, uh, have, they carry items like this. Get, get interviewed by these people. <laughs> well, you know, they're going to be, we're going to be doing, opening up some opportunities for young people as well. Yes. Uh, our baking groups that are part of the Culture Club <laughs> program, uh, the Fabulous Baker Girls and YBs for Young Bakers, they're going to be having an event to show off what they've learned this summer <laughs> in camp. And they'll be baking and preparing even a few meals and learning to set the table and just I think I may even have one or two of them on this show. Well of course. Now you do something about Martin Luther King Day every year don't you? Yes. Every year the Church of the Brethren hosts the Martin Luther King Jr. Peace Banner Workshop where we invite members of the community to come in and create a peace banner, a banner on the theme of peace or on one of the themes of Dr. King's speeches, mm -hmm. as well as have a volunteer project for children. There's so many volunteer projects going on, but they're not always aimed at the children. Yes. And we believe that Martin Luther King's birthday should be not just a day out of school, but a day on. So okay. we provide actual volunteer activities for them to participate in where they can contribute to their community. It sounds like uh, there's not much that you don't do at the Church oh, of the Brethren. <laughs> we're a pretty busy group. Yes. We're a pretty busy group. But sometimes we have to slow down and close out one activity to begin another, mm -hmm. and it's time to go now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I will say good luck and you move. Thank you. And Thank to you, our Tom. audience, I will say goodbye for now. <laughs>